So today, very quickly, I will look at my connection to intercultural learning. What is this intercultural learning? Also looking at how European youth programs can be quite a, an exemplary vehicle for intercultural learning and hopefully give some tips for the future. Um, all the way through this um, input, I would ask yourself to ask yourself a couple of questions. How does this relate to me and my work, firstly? And then what would I do or say different? It's very obvious that intercultural learning is a very vast subject. And yeah, there are, I've had to, the, the biggest choice I've had to make is what to leave out now rather than what to put in, in a way. Now, um, we, you will be able to see much more interesting things like Siri will be sharing her screen and you can see what she's drawing at the same time. Very exciting. Yes. <laughs> um, so many hundreds of years ago, last century, I was growing up in Grimsby on the North Sea coast. Um, many of, hours. Uh, thank you. Um, many of you will, will have heard of Grimsby because of course it was founded by a Dane called Grim in the, in the ninth century. And in Norse mythology, Grim or Grimir, the masked one, is about, is, are, are names that Odin, of course, um, uses when traveling around but wants to be disguised so that we can't see, see him. Um, when I was growing up as a boy in, in, in Britain in the 1960s and early 70s, life was very strange. In a way, the center of the world was Britain and it seemed like the Second World War was still going on. All my uncles had fought in the war. All the comics that were around for boys at that time um, had uh, yeah, English heroes fighting Germans. Also in terms of TV, TV programs and films on the, on, on, at the cinema. So it was a very odd time, very odd time, I think. Look, I, I joined youth clubs when I was around 13 years old um, to give me something meaningful to do, I think. I didn't really like school very much and especially language learning, I thought that was rubbish really boring what's the point of learning languages when you don't even use them so um then one day uh, my best friend uh, who, was, who also joined the youth club with me came to me and said you want to join a youth exchange and i said well what's that what's that and he said well we go in a group to a foreign town you know in another country and uh, our group um we stay with individual families and, and then, wow, then we do interesting things together, right? So I said, okay, it sounds like a good idea. Where are we gonna go? And he said, well, it's Grimsby's twin town, Bremerhaven. Actually, he didn't actually say Bremerhaven, he said Bremerhaven, but now I know how to say Bremerhaven. Um, my reaction then was, what? Why should we do a youth exchange with Nazis? was really, uh, really difficult for me at that point to, to think about doing it, but he forced me to, to, to do it. And it was great. It was mind blowing in many ways. Werner, my fr friend that I stayed with, was a great guy. His family were really funny. His dad had been in the SS, but was now a, a fisherman and was a really, really kind man. And their dog called Lumpy, could actually dance. Um, so, and even I found that my, my, my couple of words of German um, were useful. Guten Tag and things like this. My best friend, he could, he could say one sentence, which was, um, Guten Tag, mein Zahn took me away. Ich muss unbedingt zum Zahnarzt gehen, which means I've got to go to the dentist because my tooth is hurting. Um, we didn't need that on the youth exchange. But still, without that little group exchange of one week, 
I wouldn't be here where I'm now. Living in Strasbourg, France, married to an Austrian, working as a trainer and writer in all this international youth work stuff. Um, Gordon knows what I would be doing. I have no idea, no idea. Yes, it was mind blowing, that's right, exactly. Um, we have to talk about intercultural learning. What's it mean? Um, I first heard about it in 1986. That's a long time ago. Um, and I'm still trying to find out what it, what it is in some ways because it, it, it changes. Um, the context changes, world, the world changes. So um, people usually start arguing about the, name, the, the, the word culture. That's one of the things which uh, brings us uh, into big fights sometimes, because there are literally hundreds of definitions and many of them depend on the context within your, which you're speaking. And I'm talking within international youth work, European youth programs. So I found this nice definition uh, from uh, Koenig and Köstler, which is that culture is a learned set of shared interpretations about beliefs, values, norms, and social practices, which affect the behaviors of a relatively large group of people. It's pretty lustig, pretty interesting, very interesting. Um, and it's very, very, very important, I think, um, that uh, we're looking at, we're not, desperately trying to define exactly, exactly, exactly what culture is, but we need to be able to have some frames of reference for ourselves. Um, and what I find really important is these days, uh, that's why I still also use the, the phrase intercultural learning, is that it's the, the learning part which is really, really important. Yes, we talk about um, diversity management and uh, all th and, and things like this, but actually it's the learning which is important. I think that in the intercultural part in the in, in, in intercultural world, um, because in this you find out at least as much about your own culture and yourself as you do about other people's, um, and we also have to be aware of how do people perceive us. Um, we cannot get around the fact, for example, that um, you have uh, in, 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 in this world a lot of very, very, very um, different categorizations, stereotypes, prejudices, prejudices, etc., etc., etc. And uh, so I think in the inter and the inter in intercultural is very important because it's a it gives a specific meaning. It means it's give and take. It means solidarity. It means respect. So intercultural learning brings you, we hope at least, intercultural competence. Um, that's already, uh, intercultural learning has been referred to quite, quite a lot already in this conference. I think I'm very glad for that. Um, and uh, it was nice to see Andreas Carsten's you know, Ray um, insights starting with uh, intercultural learning being very important. Um, so with intercultural competence, it means that we are able, it gives us the ability to communicate and act appropriately and effectively across cultural differences. And that definitely should be based on human rights, um, values, the values of human rights. Um, Within the Erasmus Plus program, there has been a lot of work done on competence frameworks for youth workers working in international youth work and um, trainers working in international youth work. I think this is um, very, very, very important that they, they also put a big emphasis on the human rights side, that it means that um, we're not doing this for no reason, there are values behind intercultural learning. There are, um, if we really expect people to act, then it's important that they do. Um, and this helps people to really get 
Intercultural learning helps people to find out what they have an agreement about and to act in, in an anti-racist way, for example. Within the European youth programs, um, we see intercultural learning happening quite a lot, planned and unplanned, but especially um, being um, within a safe-ish learning environment. This is one of the things which makes uh, things like Erasmus Plus exchanges, also the kinds of things which are funded by the European Youth Foundation, the European Youth Centres um, of the Council of Europe. Um, they all have a non-formal educational purpose. Um, and one of those things is to create a safe learning environment in which you can experiment. And this wonderful um, word fail, for example, you can put this as an acronym which could, could be used as, for example, first attempt in learning. Um, sounds a little bit silly, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it's, it means that within a youth exchange, a short term youth exchange, you can find out much more, you can experiment, you can try things. Um, and it's very different from going on a holiday to, to a different country because it's really, yeah, with young people, youth workers, et cetera, et cetera. They work uh, with them to define what kinds of activity they're going to do and how to find out about their learning within that process. And that's really important. In communication theory, there are short messages like newspapers, headlines, tweets, and things like this. Um, and there are long messages. And a person is a very long message. And intercultural learning helps young people, I think, um, to go for the long message and ask themselves, are my first impressions or understandings correct about what I'm, I'm seeing here or how other people are seeing me? <laughs> I, like the long, I like the long message, Siri, very nice, long person. Um, <laughs> very nice. Um, so within, within, within um, even a short term uh, project, which of course lasts for quite a lot of months because you have preparations and you have follow up afterwards, um, you have the chance to experiment with those things and challenge your own prejudices and stereotypes. One of the things which I really liked um, quite a number of years ago was within the all different, all equal anti-racist campaign across Europe, um, which was uh, first, first run in 1995 and then in 2005 again. Um, in Norway, um, the choice of the symbol created for the anti-racist exchange, uh, not anti-racist exchange, anti-racist campaign was an adaptation of symbols which you see on CDs, MP3 players, all those kinds of things, where normally on those players, pause comes after play. But as Siri has just slammed in there to the thing, you have a look. For the, for, for, for the campaign in Norway, you had pause and then play. So just think a little bit before you act. Um, find out whether you are on the right, right, right lines. Um, this helps many, many people in yeah, non-judgmental observation skills, for example, and also helps them grow what I would call intercultural antennae. You know, those things that stick out of insects in many ways or snails or that kind of thing. Um, Many things that go on when you, you come, you're, you're in, 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 in direct contact and interaction with other, with people from other cultures, is that there are things happening which you cannot immediately find, immediately find out why it's going on. So these intercultural antennae, they help you do that. Also helps you, um, a friend of mine uh, very much talks about opening up the channel between your belly and your head. So if you are feeling oh, something's a bit interesting here, something's going on a little bit strange here, listen to that in yourself, listen to that. And again, 
why not take the time in your reflections in a youth exchange go for that and the skills that you, you gain within uh, Erasmus projects I think they're not only for um, having better holidays they're also things that mean that you integrate your own community yourself into the community uh, in a much better way um, wow um, I have two minutes left yes I see thank you very much um, <laughs> the a glimpse into the future I think I think the world changes and intercultural learning has to change with it um, short-term group exchanges in Erasmus they can make very nice um, stepping stones um, voluntary service which means months away from home um, is a great example of a next step after a youth exchange Norway as far as I can uh, I can understand is still unsure of whether it wants to be part of the European Solidarity Corps program from next year um, I think research has shown that the, the, the people who do spend that long time and have a reflected learning set of experiences, if they are, if they are um, uh, able to do that kind of volunteering, it has an, an enormously bigger effect on them. Also, the volunteers that come to your country um, also have the chance to find out much more about what life is like in Norway and contribute to it as well. Um, so I think if you ain't got a European Solidarity Corps, lobby for it. Maybe it's not my, my, place, my place to say this, I don't know. Um, I think what's very, very, very important, of course, is always to have a poetic part in your heart. So I'll end with a nice little poem. Whether the weather be hot or whether the weather be cold, we'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. And I'm sure you in Norway, you know as much as I do that conversations about weather are very important for us. Um, and at the beginning of this presentation, I asked you to think two questions. What would you have done different? And what do you, what relates to me? Um, if you have a moment, if you, if you have something to write with, please write, jot down a couple of notes um, and please send them to me somehow. I don't know how, but uh, it would be nice to, to hear from you. And those of you who, who uh, will be choosing the, 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 the workshop in the afternoon, looking forward very much to hearing your stories about intercultural learning. Thank you very much. And Siri, could you share the, the picture?